All right, I'm here with an updated look at my game room. This year's game room tour. I know you guys really like the game room tour. It is by far the most popular video I do every year, and uh, I get a lot of requests for it mid-year. I only do one a year at the end of the year just because, um, you know, things don't change around too much, but there's some decent changes this year that happened. Uh, I always am moving stuff around and some new shelves and everything, so we're going to just jump into this year's game room tour. Um, if you're new to the channel, which most of you probably will be, my collection, I've been collecting since 2011. So my collection mainly comes from doing garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores, acquiring stuff for very cheap that way. Obviously, like newer stuff, PS5, Switch isn't that way, but I like to acquire stuff for very cheap that way and then sell stuff I don't want to fund, you know, the newer stuff or maybe higher end stuff, trade stuff off. Uh, that's what my channel's all about here, and uh, that is how I build up my collection without spending, you know, too much out of pocket. I'm not loaded or anything, so, um, yeah, we'll jump into the game room tour now. I guess I'll start with this wall. Um, stairs are finally finished. If you guys have been watching the game room tour, this was a basement. It used to be completely unfinished, and uh, slowly over the past couple years, it has been finished now. So first we'll start over here. This is a little bit dark, but I got this shelf. Um, so I will put the shelves in the comments in the description because that's one of the biggest comments I get. Where do I get my shelves? Um, I use, for most of my shelving, I'll say when it's not, I use what's called the Atlantic Oscar shelves. Um, there's two different sizes, and I will put the links to those. Those are affiliate links, so they help out the channel. But I will put the links for those in the description. I'll put it in the pinned comment so you guys know what I'm using. Um, I was actually lucky, lucky enough to get one of these at a garage sale this year. This one I got at a garage sale this year for $5, which is great because not only was it really cheap to get, um, usually they run me anywhere from 80 to 100 sometimes the prices change, um, but it was already pre-assembled, so I didn't have to spend like two hours trying to put this together. But up here I got Sega Genesis Model 3 in the box. Um, Model 3 was like a church sale find a long time ago, and then the box I actually found at a garage sale with a Model 2 inside of it, so I don't know what was up there. Samba de Amigo Maracas in the box. This was a Goodwill, uh, shopgoodwill.com find years ago when that website was still good. Um, and then I just have some miscellaneous stuff, mostly Sega. This is mostly my Sega shelf. I don't have Dreamcast on here, and I do have long box PS1 stuff on here. Um, but I do have Saturn games. Don't have a huge Saturn collection, but I have some. Even smaller Sega CD collection. Um, I like the this Mega Man Legacy collection. doesn't have anything to do with Sega, but just a cool box. Long box PS1 games. Um, the rest of the PS1 collection we'll see later, but that's where the long box ones fit because that's a little bit of a taller shelf. Um, Genesis games. So if you're interested at all in more in-depth look at my collections that I go over, most of them, you know, bigger collections, stuff like Sega CD and Saturn don't, but most of them have have um, more in-depth videos going every t over every title in my collection, giving some thoughts on them or whatever. But you will find that in the Video Game Collections playlist on my channel. So, end of my Genesis collection, then a few 32X games I have. Uh, this is my blue Game Gear. I got this at a garage sale for a buck. Um, this is actually the only handheld system I've ever had modded. So this has a backlit screen and a new screen. Um, I got it fixed by a guy, and then he was just like, do you want to just get this modded and kind of go all the way with it? And I was like, you know what, why not? Sure. Because um, it was having problems with audio. But I only paid a dollar for the system itself at a garage sale a few years back. So um, great deal, and it's good to have, you know, I'm not the biggest Game Gear fan, but it's good to have a pretty functional one that looks good and plays pretty well. I feel like the Game Gear is kind of underrated. Then another really cool one, Sega Nomad. This was another garage sale find. Uh, this is a portable Genesis. It's like really no concessions except a couple games don't play on it. But really cool system. Got that in a box for like 20 bucks with some other like Super Nintendo stuff and PlayStation stuff. Really cool. And then Master System games. These are all from garage sales. I actually have a, bo a boxed, complete and boxed Master System console that I'd love to have on display, but I just don't have a great place for it. But Master System's pretty cool. I... I I know a lot of people hate these box arts, but I've always really liked them. I don't know. Something about the fact that it just looks like it's on graphing paper. Kind of looks like, I don't know, you would have it in, like, 
your dad's office or something. I don't know. I've always liked it, even if it kind of sucks. So moving on over here. I like the Big Box Xenoblade uh, Special Edition Big Boxes. Those are pretty cool. I'm not a big fan of Xenoblade 2, but uh, they look really nice all uniform together. And then I got the two Persona Q2s and some Amiibos of those series. 3DS collection, big 3DS fan. I think it's a really fun system to collect for. I had a lot of fun collecting for it while it was out and then kind of just randomly picking up a lot of the titles that I was looking for along the way. Some weird hard to find ones out there and they're starting to climb up in price. If you're interested in 3DS stuff, I would definitely not wait too much longer because I think they're only going to keep going up in price. There's already some games that are pretty expensive. DS games. Another system I really like. This one's definitely climbed in price lately. I mean, you can say that about everything, but DS stuff has certainly climbed in price lately. Or DS. This is uh, from Year of Luigi, uh, Luigi's Mansion statue. It's actually a really nice, like, kind of bookend um, statue. Now you just have, what is it, my Nintendo, and they give you a screensaver or something. It sucks, it sucks so bad. Vita, I'm a huge Vita fan. Great system. Not a huge Vita collection, but, I mean, even, it's not a huge library. PSP, I actually don't have a PSP. These are all games that I just found for cheap at garage sales and whatever. And I have not been able to find a good condition Vita. I'm going to Japan soon. I think I'm just going to get one there because their handhelds are always in great shape. Um, box Game Boy games. Some good ones. Uh, these Pokemons were actually in an eBay lot. Someone misspelled it. And this was like 2013. Someone misspelled the eBay lot. And it was like a really bad listing. And I got it for like 50 bucks for the two of those games. A Game Boy and another Game Boy Color game. Um, so really cool. Some 3DSs. This is the Fire Emblem Fates new 3DS system. I got that at a pawn shop for pretty cheap, and now it's definitely gone up in price, but I think I paid like 120 for that. And then uh, this is one of the 3DSs I used while the 3DS was out, the Mario & Luigi one. I always really like this design. It's simple, but it's really fun. And then another one I'm really happy to get um, is the Persona Q uh, Special Edition 3DS system. And I'm so happy to have it complete, too. Uh, that one was I got in trade credit, but it ran me like 300 bucks. But my trade credit stuff, uh, I usually don't have too much money into. I got some Japanese Game Boy Advance games, and then a Japanese Game Boy game I got. I really like this Bomberman just because it's in a um, like a band aid tin. I've always thought that was really cool. It's just like in a little band aid tin thing. And then we got some Ace Attorneys because I'm a huge fan of that series. Mother Three, a, a Bomberman game. Box Game Boy Advance games. I have some good ones. <laughs> I like to think. Uh, I got some good ones, so. And then some box Game Gear titles down here. Don't sleep on the Game Gear. It's, pre it's pretty fun. Um, just kind of a shelf filler of F1 race. I think that box is cool. It comes with um, the one cable, what do they call it? Uh, Four-player adapter. And then I have Resident Evil Gaiden, which is a pretty hard-to-come-by Game Boy color game. I'm a big Resident Evil fan, and I got that at a garage sale for like 50 cents. It's a really interesting game, too. Then some sealed Gamecom games. It's not enough that they're boxed. They're also sealed. Because why would you want to play the Gamecom? So TV I use. I got it on my PS5 right now. But yeah, this is the TV I, I use. Uh, it's been treating me pretty well. I got it back in 2016. So it is 4K. Um, but yeah. And then this is just my media stand. My cable management skills are horrible. You'll probably tell that throughout this tour. But my cable management skills aren't great. But I got all my systems down here that I play. All my HD systems, I should say. Everything that hooks up through HDMI I have down here. So, Xbox One S, uh, my Switch, PS3 uh, that I use regularly. That is still empty. I had my PS4 there, but I boxed that up because I got the PS5. Um, I don't even know what I'm going to put there. Uh, my 360, I have the Special Edition Star Wars one. I don't have it hooked up to anything right now, but I have the cables like ready to go. I just hate that big power brick. I have another PS3. This is um, one of the backwards compatible models, so I use this to play PS2 games. Um, kind of upscaled on this TV. It's pretty nice. And my horrible cable management cube. I'm sorry. This is going to bother someone horribly, but not good. And then the Wii U. Good old Wii U. Um, got this little corner here of just some stuff on display. This lamp here and everything. PS5. I got this little... 
thing just for the PS5. Um, I guess when I got it originally, I was hoping it would fit in this queue, but the thing's a, a monstrosity, so it doesn't quite fit there. Um, but I found this at a garage sale for two bucks, and it's it's a good stand for the PS5. And then I got some other stuff, cool PlayStation little sign that actually lights up, but I don't have it plugged in. And then some uh, Ace Attorney Nendroids um, that are pretty fun. Uh, Persona 25th Anniversary uh, framed print. This was like way too... I paid way too much for this. This was dumb purchase. I should have turned this on. Shoot. I should have turned this guy on. Let me get it on. Wait. Wait. The Metal Gear Rising Lamp. Uh, where's the mode? The cool... Where's the cool mode? It does a little thing. I don't... I don't know. Does it do the little thing? I th Maybe I just made that up. I don't know. Uh, Metal Gear Rising Lamp. This was in a garage sale find. Um deal that I did, my biggest deal I've ever done, this was in there, um, so I got to add that from the collection, that was pretty cool. This is just an assortment of things that ch changes around of like cool big box stuff I like to display, as you can tell, I like Persona a lot, so I have those up. This was the Switch I got, still sealed and everything, I got from the uh, GameStop trade-in challenge where I traded a bunch of junk for a brand new Switch and I wanted to see how cheap I could get it for. I think I paid 28 bucks in, in junk and got it traded it for the Switch, so check that video out. That one's a pretty good one. Um, Breath of the Wild Collector's Edition, Yakuza, Catherine Full Body, Mega Man. Switch Collection, um, updated Switch Collection is going to come out next week. I'm going to put that video out next Saturday, so keep an eye out for that one. I really like the, I don't know, I really like the all red look of the Switch. It's a little bit depressing, but I don't know, something about it is kind of cool but i've always really liked the different colors with the same scheme up top so ps5 collection here i just did the ps5 collection so check that out some shelf fillers for the time being ace attorney blu-rays and manga ps3 this was my preferred system that generation so i have most of the multi-plats for that generation on this system if i'm gonna have them at all although i kind of regret that the xbox um Backwards compatibility it was really nice. So I kind of regret that now, but I still really like the PS3. It has a really cool exclusive library too. Xbox One, once again, more on PlayStation 4 this generation. So my Xbox One collection is just an assortment of random games that I found for cheap garage sales and thrift stores and flea markets that I figured, hey, I'll, I'll check that out. I'll, I'll grab that for cheap. Uh, no More Heroes Killian Dollar Trilogy. This is really cool Japanese trilogy. I really like the art on that. I think it's awesome. Then PS4 takes up an, almost an entire row. Um, I should mention that this whole is not one unit. It's two Atlantic Oscars put together. Um, so each one has three, as you can see. Two Atlantic Oscars put together of the, the bigger one, um, which will be, of course, in the description, in the comments and everything. But yeah, PS4 collection. Huge PS4 fan. I just feel like they really killed it with this library. Um, so many great games, exclusive and otherwise, just awesome. So, big PS4 fan. And then I got a, the Zelda Wii U gamepad. I got this at a garage sale, the Zelda Wii U, you know, system. But the only thing that's different is the gamepad. So I figured I'd put the gamepad on display. Uh, it's nice to actually have one in good shape because usually these are destroyed by children. But luckily this one wasn't. Guys, I'm a big Wii fan. I know the system has a lot of garbage, but there's a lot of really good stuff on here. A lot of really interesting niche stuff on here, and uh, I just can't resist the good old Wii. Even if, you know, there are the thousand games, and probably I would say 800 of them are total trash. Um, there's still a, a ton of systems left, a ton of games left for the system that are just awesome, so... This is like actually a tumbler in here, but I don't really want a tumbler. So uh, I just thought the box was cool because I'm a big Grasshopper fan. So uh, Wii U. So, oh, now it's doing the cool thing. It just started up. Look, just as I'm saying this, it just started up. It does that little cool thing. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Wii U. Um, I'm actually going for full set. I had most of the good games already to begin with, so I figured I'll just finish it off. Um, so been going for that. There's a few ones that'll be hard to get. I got a lot of the heavy hitters. I have Devil's Third sealed, um, which is probably the heaviest of heavy hitters. But I got to get that Unwritten Tales game and 
Turbo the Snail or God knows the Crudes or whatever. But I got Axiom Verge 2. That was the only limited run game for the Wii U. So, And what's that one game? Uh, Shakedown Hawaii. I have that as well. So, PS2, another system with a ton of trash, but a ton of just awesome, awesome games. And uh, I kind of have an eclectic PS2 library. I feel like the PS2 library is eclectic in general, but I feel like mine is extra eclectic because it's like always are finding awesome stuff for it. And it's like, there's so many games I'm still like, I've never even heard of that before. I mean, who knew there was a VeggieTales game for PS2? I mean, that's awesome. So, yeah. Xbox, original Xbox, which I can't call Xbox One. Uh, original Xbox is underrated for collecting, guys. It's not too expensive. The library has a lot of interesting exclusives that are nowhere else and never got ported anywhere. Original Xbox is underrated for collecting. I always have really liked the spine art. I think it's iconic. The cool, that color of green is awesome. The up, the top label is awesome. And then just the different artworks. I don't know. Don't sleep on Xbox. There's a ton of cool stuff. There's a ton of great stuff from Sega. It's essentially a Dreamcast 2 in a lot of ways. It's great. Don't sleep on the original Xbox, guys. And then 360. I'm not a big 360 fan. Uh, it's fine. It's just I prefer PS3. Uh, the exclusives don't really grab me but there's some good stuff on there so yeah 360 and then i got a bunch of empty shelves to grow stuff around which is always the plan i like to have a little bit of shelf fillers or a little bit of space just because you know i'm always adding new stuff so i don't want to be completely packed uh my table here my end table got some mario coasters we got what do we got we got luigi got the boys here cool i'm going to show you what's in the drawer what's in the drawer Bunch of junk. Uh, DSi XL. It's my Switch case. Some extra controllers and Joy-Cons. Uh, my Vita. So, what's in the drawer? I think I, got, I think I got questions about that before. I don't know. Sofa. So, yeah. It reclines, so. Here's the second part. I, I, I kind of see this as the more, for the most part, more modern area. This not included, but... This is more of a modern area, modern games. I mean, there's some retro stuff in here, handhelds off over here. But, um, you know, I have that. And then I have the two different setups. So last year I had the TVs on. Uh, everyone commented how it was annoying that there was a high pitch ringing. I promise that wasn't some kind of dog whistle or like MK Ultra <laughs> mind control effects. It was just I had two TVs running and they didn't like it. So <laughs> the camera didn't like that frequency picking up from it. So I'm going to keep those off this year. I usually like to have them running with some kind of like games demo or something on it, but not going to do that because I, it is kind of annoying when I was watching the video back, but we will get to all this in a second. Got the more retro cartridge, retro Nintendo shelf here. Um, some classic system boxes up top. Uh, this I got in Japan. This is complete in there with everything, and it was like 50 bucks, guys. I don't know, you know... <laughs> I don't know if you're able to get to Japan, but if you're into collecting, if you're into Japanese video games and you have an opportunity, definitely do it. There is definitely some awesome deals to be had. And it's so exciting because it's like a lot of the stuff you've never seen before. You have no chance of getting here in the United States. Really cool. Really good experience. I'm going to bed again next year, hopefully. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Genesis Mini 1 and then the 2. Look how small that thing is. I, don't, I feel like no one bought that, but I thought it was pretty cool. Um, these are garage sale finds. This is a garage sale sign find a while ago. This one was a garage sale find 2021 complete system. Great box variant, uh, with the Mario all-stars Mario world still has this special offer. I didn't peel that off or anything too. Still vintage has that special offer. Really cool. Really great shape. Um, I was like, I got that garage sale for like 60 bucks with a couple games, including one of them. Spoiler Wayne's world, which is like a $200 game. Garage sales, if you have the patience for it, you're going to hit 100 sales and maybe five of them will have good stuff. But if you have the patience for it, and it's a lot of fun to find games. NES shelf. Once again, I should mention that this is two Atlantic Oscars once again put together here. Um, got some Ace Attorney Perler beads that I got at convention so long ago now. Uh, my off-brand NES games here. Finishing off this, some of the some of the boys here. 
SNES. Uh, one of, you know, I have a decently sized library of it, but it's not that big. Got to shout out Earthbound. Garage sale find for five bucks in 2021. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. That was from my best garage sale day ever. I was, I mean, I absolutely killed it. And then like the last sale I went to, I got Earthbound. So <laughs> it was already like killing it. And then that happens. But yeah, I had been looking for Earthbound since 2011 for a good price, and it took me to 2021, so 10 years <laughs> happened. So yeah, got some good stuff. Uh, Banjo-Kazooie U2s. Um, I feel like these U2s, I, they do a lot of memes and stuff, but they're pretty cute figures. They do like memes and YouTubers, which doesn't interest me at all, buying figures of, but I feel like the game ones are pretty cute. I think they did like Crash Bandicoot and stuff. That's probably the only one I'll buy, but... Pretty fun. N64 games. I have some of the higher dollar ones in a plastic case. Bomberman. Um, I'd like to get end labels for these at some point. So I'm going for a full N64 set. I have about 100 of them, I think. Loose cart, and then the rest of them will go over to my box collection in a little while. One of the big boys here. Super Bowling, I've told this story, so the short ver version of it is, is that I found this at a garage sale in 2014 with a Super Nintendo in the box and a copy of Donkey Kong Country for $5. I sold the game because the label was kind of torn for 40 bucks. Regretted it so much, but in 2020 I bought this. I think I paid around 200 for it. Uh, it's definitely gone up a lot since then, but got to have it for the full set. It's a really crappy bowling game, but, you know. GameCube stuff. So I finished my GameCube collection for the most part. There's still a few titles I'd like, Chibi Robo, and uh, you know, there's a few more I'd like to get. But I finished it for the most part in like 2015-ish, and thank God I did because these games are just crazy expensive. Now every everyone knows it. You know, it's funny. <laughs> Back then, I was collecting GameCube pretty hardcore because it just it's my favorite system. It always has been. Uh, I'm not a bandwagoner. I promise. But I was collecting GameCube pretty hardcore and got some Japanese GameCube games as well. Uh, and everyone was being like, oh, you know, you don't collect GameCube. You got to collect NES and Super Nintendo like a real man. And then a lot of those same guys now are out here being like, I'm collecting GameCube. This is great. Because I guess, uh, I don't know, trends, values, who knows? N64, that's uh, Worms Armageddon in there. World of Nintendo Metroid little guy there. My huge Turbo Graphics collection. Um, it has actually gone up, you know, 100% since last year's video. Uh, I got here, uh, Bonk's Adventure, I got it at a store earlier this year. But yeah, got two games for the Turbo Graphics. so, uh, huge. Turbo Graphics uh, system itself was actually a garage sale find for 40 bucks a few years ago. Loose Genesis games, try not to collect them loose too much, but, you know, when you get them, when you do garage sales, it's just going to happen, and, you know, I'm not going to turn around, turn down a... Castlevania Bloodlines or whatever. Loose 32X games and a couple loose master systems as well as the uh, Bayonetta is over there chilling. So Dreamcast Collections and this the third system doing full for I'm like less than 20 games away from full set. So uh, pretty exciting. Love the Dreamcast. Great system. So good. Great library. Um, but yeah, I, I got some like mid-tier ones and then a few high-tier ones I got to get left. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is probably one of the most, I should go back to Dreamcast, one of the most highly priced ones currently. Got those there. Some Japanese Dreamcast games uh, that I just picked up because they were interesting. I, I've always liked the title Sentimental Graffiti 2. Um, but I also got, like, Shenmue 2. And then this was actually in, like, a kind of a rural community. I found this in a thrift store, which was weird, because why was a Japanese Sega Saturn game in a thrift store? In a rural Ohio. I don't know. PS1. Big PS1 fan as well. Uh, great library. Like I said, you can check out some of my other videos if you want a more in-depth looks at my libraries for each system individually. And some more down here. It's starting to get hard to film on the lower shelves. So if it's kind of crap, you know, I'm sorry. Got the Lunars. I got these both while they were still cheap too. You know, I think I got lucky. But 
yeah, some Japanese PS1 games. I always like the weird, uh, where is it? There's Persona 2 there, um, the one that we didn't get. I have both the Persona PS1 games. Um, <sighs> obligatory for this channel. Got to call out Mort the Chicken. I should have called him out earlier. Um, that's just an obligatory for this channel. Oh, I can't put him back. This is content. This is content. Um, I always liked like the Japanese Crash Bandicoot. I always thought he was weird looking. Some more Amiibos. Some Pac-Man glasses I got out at the flea market or whatever. Some whatevers. Some game soundtracks I have. I actually have more I should throw on there. Um... Just random Atari games, Coleco games, just because they're Nintendo related. I don't collect Atari or, or anything like that anymore. I I focused more on post, you know, NES and later. I don't. I used to have a maybe fifty Atari games, and I just got rid of them. My CDI collection of one Flintstones game or whatever. Yeah, and three DO games, and the boys. So that's the retro shelf. Going over to some of my setups now. Um, so this is a different TV than I had last year here. Uh, the TV I used to have, it was pretty good, but um, it this, the, the picture started getting really crooked. I know there's a fix for it, but I was like, eh. I had this Trinitron I got at a garage sale for two bucks. I'm just going to throw it out. It's a little smaller, but I think the picture is better on it. And I don't know, I just like it better anyway. So it's all good there, but... The stand I got at a thrift store for five bucks and painted it black. It was pretty hideous. Painted it black. I think it looks sweet and it works perfectly for um, storing retro game consoles and a retro TV. I do believe that retro games just look better on CRTs. That's why I keep them around and set up and everything. But uh, I understand why you would not want to have these clunky, you know, outdated tvs to play some games so i don't blame you at all if you don't want to have that i know some people are really purists about that i don't care uh this nintendo sign was a gift it was i think from etsy but i i don't have an exact it's not official or anything so i can't really i know people asked where i got that and i i don't know just search nintendo sign on etsy probably something will come up lego tokyo uh and then my retro console setups or standard definition if you don't want to call Wii retro yet uh I have a Wii setup, then I have a GameCube setup. I think I might get one of those HDMI GameCube's hookups. So if I want to play GameCube games on this TV, I still could with the Wii, but I could also have a nice, uh, you know, GameCube to HDMI on my bigger TV because those look pretty high quality. So I might do that. Uh, Dreamcast, PS2, N64, and then the Switcher boxes that they're all connected to. Also got Xbox and a Saturn underneath the tv as well and i'll go i'll go into the storage so this is all stuff that i have the cables ready to go if i want to play it just because i can't hook it up to the switchers without it making a mess if i want to play it i got everything i need in there i can just hook it up to the front of the tv and play it so it's not too much of a challenge but nes super nintendo uh, the reason i'd like to get the gamecube out of here and put it on the other TV so I can have the Super Nintendo hooked up to this. Because that's like the one system I, I kind of miss the most not having hooked up right now. Um, but I mean, I'm not really playing 3DO. I'm not, <laughs> that was a garage sale find. I don't really have too many games for it. Uh, I only have the two Turbo Graphics games. So Keith Courage isn't keeping me that entertained to keep this out all the time. But And then NES. I want to get a top loader. I want to find... That's one of my biggest things I want to find is a top loader. Because it's just such a pain as it is. Um, but yeah, I got some other weird stuff. Virtual Boy Controller... <laughs> Dreamcast keyboard, Dreamcast fishing rod and gun. You know, normal stuff. Moving over to this setup next. Uh, this Xbox sign I got at a closing store sale, like my first video, my first pickup video, I think, or one of my first pickup videos. Uh, I got this Xbox sign at a closing store for dirt cheap. It, it, it's official. It's kind of yellowed now. Uh, it is vintage, you know, but I just think it's kind of cool. This TV is from the 90s, still works great. <laughs> this was the TV that my parents had when I was growing up, and I have it down here now. Still works great. Um, pretty good TV. And then just the console setup, console hookups. Usually I pull up a chair, kind of move stuff around. This is like kind of my second round. Stuff I don't play quite as much, but I'd like to have hooked up still. The Sega Monstrosity. 
It's probably the one I play the most from here. There is a 32X. You can't see, but there is a 32X on there. Don't worry. Uh, Master System, Super Famicom, PlayStation 1, Japanese PlayStation 1. Uh, and then a, a Mad Cat's branded switcher box there as well. So that's that. And then I have them all hooked up on this. It's not a fire hazard because I keep this off. And then when I want to play it, I turn it on. So it's not like always on. I know some people like to make that joke, but it's uh, not real. This is the door into storage. Not going back there today, guys, but I got a little Splatoon. I like this NES doormat. Got some random stuff on these shelves. Those Game & Watches they did the past couple years. Some little little fellas. Some Amiibos, some little whatevers. Moving on to this. This is uh, mostly boxed Nintendo stuff. Um, one of my favorite things to collect is box N64 stuff, as you can tell. So I got a lot of those. I, N64 is probably my favorite system to collect for, so I got all but one of the Funtastics. And then I need the gold one and the Pikachu one, but that's coming along. Um, then kind of just my Zelda collection miscellaneous stuff here. Uh, the Zelda 2DS is still sealed. Uh, the Majora's Mask from Japan, that is really cool. Um... The Zelda 2DS XL is also still sealed. And just some Amiibos and little guys. Yeah, and 64 boxed. Most of these are complete, but not all of them. Um, but yeah, just got a variety of titles. One of my favorite things to collect, like I said. This was a great deal on Daikatana. It is missing manual, but I got it for like 75 bucks. Um... Really hard one to come by even loose, but the box is like unheard of. So, continuing on with these. I'm starting to run out of space for them, but... Someone, people ask, because this is my backdrop of my regular videos, why I have two Ocarina of Times. It's two different variants. So this is the normal gray cart variant that came out later. This was the initial run, collector's edition, gold cart. So... I got to get the two variants for uh, Majora's Mask as well. There's a collector's edition that came with the lenticular one, and there is just the regular one. So I've had that question before, and that's the answer. Another red one, really uncommon game, especially in the box, Indiana Jones. Uh, I think I paid like 50 bucks for that at a game store. They just completely mispriced it. I think that's part of the fun. You know, I like playing games, but I think part of the fun is finding stuff... Um, at good prices or remembering what you paid for things and being like, man, that was a great deal. I got a great deal or I got a great find. I think that's a lot of the fun of it. And I think probably a lot of you guys agree. Let me know in the comments. And that's the end of the N64 stuff. And then, yeah, this was a garage sale find. This uh, was a game store find that they got. They priced this as a regular gray console would be, not the fantastic gray. So got a good deal on that. This is all trade credit on this guy. And then this was my first N64 I got at this really, really crappy game store. It, it sold like magic cards and stuff. Um, but a really crappy game store in the mall. I got that for 35 bucks back in 2011. No longer there. That mall's uh, been torn down. Or is being torn down. But the game store was just atrocious. Uh, so some box NES games. I got some good stuff in here. <laughs> Uh, these were garage sale finds, the Castlevania Trilogy. 20 bucks each I got these for. They're like pristine. Um, but yeah. NES stuff, some Super Famicom games. I've always liked the Super Famicom boxes. They're like old VHS boxes, and the artwork is always so, so cool. Always been a huge fan of that. I've always really liked that. And then some uh, N64 games box from Japan as well. A little Zelda standee. Super Nintendo games. Let's see if I have anything interesting to go over here. Uh, any interesting stories. Got the Final Fantasies. Final Fantasy, these nuts. Am I right? Um, all kinds of stuff. It's starting to get hard to film back there. Uh, Mario RPG I have in here somewhere. Uh, yeah, right there. That was actually, I got the box, 
the box from this guy I knew at this game store, this game store has been closed like five times and then they reopen and then they close again. Uh, they were telling me, oh yeah, we just throw away the boxes <laughs> for our games. And this was like 2017, 2018. So it wasn't like no one knew about retro game collecting. It was like, you should have known better by now. We just throw away the boxes. You can have them for like a buck or a couple bucks each. I think I paid like two for since it had Mario on the cover. Um, box and manual, they were going to just throw away. I just, I can't believe it. But I'm running out of space here too, so I got some on top. I'll have to figure that out. Strategy guys and art books and everything like that. Uh, Power Glove. These are hardcover strategy guides. And then, you know, paperback ones. I always like getting them if I can get them for cheap at a garage sale or, or whatever. I like getting strategy guides. I think they're fun. I like the unofficial ones. That like are, <laughs> You can tell, like, they can't use real artwork, those unauthorized ones. I've always liked those as well. Uh, a lot of these, actually, I got from a garage sale where the, this was all about to be thrown away. They were all in a box out of the curb. I was like, hey, can I have these? <laughs> are you going to throw these away? And they're like, yeah, I don't like yours if you want it. Thought I was crazy for wanting it, but I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, just a little nook of random stuff. This is a really cool uh, strategy box set of a um, bunch of Zelda strategy guides that are really nice. Some N64 accessories that are in the box. The cleaning kit is actually still sealed and everything. And then Mario holding up the GameCom because Club Nintendo pin set behind him as well. All right, I got my night light here because, you know, when you're gaming at night, you want to have the Mandalorian and uh, Baby Yoda projected on the ceiling so you can see where you're gaming. Virtual Boy, this is a vintage kind of Mario toy box or something. I have some just random junk in there, nothing too exciting. I want to do more with this space above the futon. I'm going to get a shelf up here, I'm pretty sure, and then put my N64 consoles and make a little N64 display. And then I can free up some space here. But for right now, that's empty. But I got these posters. They're actually GameStop pre-order bonuses, believe it or not. Um, but I actually like them. I think the artwork's good. And there's no, like, ESRB rating or, like, coming November 9th or whatever. You know? <laughs> so that's good. Uh, Star Fox 64. Um, you know, paper or cardboard cutout standee, whatever you want to call it. This was actually from a Nintendo employee. But I got it given to me. So really cool. Futon. And uh, my table here. It's actually a PlayStation table from Pottery Barn Teen. That was on clearance. And uh, it's a pretty nice table. It scratches up really bad on top. That's So I got a piece of glass made for it. But I'm going to guess that's why it was on clearance. But I keep controllers in here. What do we got in here? Whole mess of stuff. I got this dog bone just recently at the flea market for five bucks with two other NES controllers. Didn't have a dog bone. I like it so much better than a regular NES controller. My God. All right, what's in this one then? We'll check out this one. Wii U gamepad and some other Wii stuff and Switch Pro controller. Okay. This is the uh, Mario phone. I think it's from 2002. Original. He is missing. Uh, he should have a little lightning bolt in his hand, but I got this from a garage sale for 15 bucks this year. And I just think it's pretty fun. Um, pretty fun display. But yeah, that is the game room. Some things are different. Some things are the same. Uh, somewhere, I don't know how many games I have anymore. Over 2,500 at this point. But um, just a lot of fun to collect it and kind of know where it's all coming from and have all these different stories of, you know, where the, where I got it, what deals it is. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is a living space for me as well in a lot of ways this is like my own living room so i try not to keep it overly cluttered i try not to have a bunch of stuff that's just going to collect a bunch of dust so um hope you enjoyed this year's game room tour uh subscribe if you're not already subscribed i do game collecting videos and game videos like that and that's all i do i'm not going to spam you try to put out like one video a week throughout the year uh summer is mostly dedicated to garage sale videos so make sure to check out the playlist for that if you want to see some of those um follow me on twitter at objo gaming uh leave a like if you enjoyed it really helps out the channel it really helps out the pickup video uh and the game room collection videos so check that out switch collection updated coming next week and leave a comment with your questions concerns thoughts ideas fears i don't know 
But I hope you enjoyed my game room. Hope you enjoyed my virginity cavern. And until next time, I'd like to thank you for watching.